What's up everybody? Today I'm going to be talking to you about five pros and five cons about living in Daytona Beach, Florida. So stay tuned and check it out. Hey guys, I'm Adam Bejan, licensed realtor with Wolves Realty here in Daytona Beach, Florida. And today I'm going to be talking to you about my five pros and cons about living in the Daytona Beach area. Now, these are my personal pros and cons, so you might have your own list and that's totally cool, but I've lived here for 33 years. I was born and raised here, went to school all the way from elementary school up to college. So I know the area and more importantly, I love this area. But enough about me, here are my five pros and cons of living in the Daytona Beach area. Okay, so I know this is gonna sound redundant because I'm a realtor, but my number one pro for living in the Daytona Beach area is the location. We all know the three most important words in real estate are location, location, location. Well, check this out, because it's really hard to beat the Daytona Beach location. Okay, so Daytona's location is pretty cool because it's considered to be in what's called the Golden Triangle. Now, we're about an hour east of Orlando, about an hour south of Jacksonville, 45 minutes south of St. Augustine, which is the oldest city in the United States. And we're about 45 minutes to an hour north of Port Canaveral and the Kennedy Space Center. But I gotta admit, one of my favorite things about Daytona Beach's location is that no matter where you are in the city, you're just a few minute drive to the beach. So it's pretty nice having Orlando in your backyard because number one, you're really close to the Orlando International Airport if you need to catch a flight somewhere. You've got all the major attractions there. So Disney, Universal Studios, Islands of Adventure, uh, Blizzard Beach. If you're into professional basketball, the NBA has a team there, the Orlando Magic. There's a ton of nightlife. There's a ton of, of places to go out dancing, great restaurants, bars. So whatever kind of entertainment you're into, whether it's a night out on the town with your significant other, or you just want a great uh, little getaway for you and your family, Orlando's close enough that you have access to all of those amenities without having to live in a big city and all the traffic and construction that typically comes with that lifestyle. Next, let's head up north to Jacksonville. So Jacksonville has several options for entertainment as well. They've got great shopping. They're home to the Jacksonville Zoo, which is an amazing zoo to go and spend the day at. They've got the NFL team, the Jacksonville Jaguars. So if you're into NFL sports, you can catch a game whenever you want to. They've got the Port of Jacksonville. So if you like cruising, you've got options for cruising there. The uh, Jacksonville International Airport is there. So again, you're within a quick drive to another major airport. Now, just in between Daytona Beach and Jacksonville is St. Augustine, Florida. And St. Augustine is one of my favorite places to spend a weekend there. Now, it's very, very romantic. It's also great if you just wanna bring the family there for some sightseeing because it is the oldest city in the United States. So. The Spanish, when they settled this area, they actually built a fort there. So the fort is still there to this day. They offer tours daily, so you can take the kids and go check out this fort. It's right on the intercoastal, so it's a beautiful, beautiful way to spend the day. And when you're all done checking out the fort, literally right across the street, there's all kinds of restaurants, bars, shopping, San Sebastian wineries there, the ice plant, which is a, a really old warehouse where they used to make ice has actually been converted into a bar. So it's just a really, really cool way to go and spend a day or maybe a, a quick little weekend getaway up there in St. Augustine. Next, let's head south to Port Canaveral. So if you're into cruising, literally hop on I-95 South and drive about 45 minutes and you're at Port Canaveral. A lot of major cruise lines sail in and out of that port, so it's really, really simple to catch a cruise. Uh, Port Canaveral also has what's called Kennedy Space Center. So if you've never seen a shuttle or a rocket launch, you can head on down to Kennedy Space Center, see a launch in person. It's absolutely amazing. But one of the cool things about that is, is 
Kennedy Space Center is actually close enough to Daytona that typically on any launch day, you can walk out into your front yard or your backyard and catch the launch from the comfort of your own home. I would say the biggest con of the Daytona Beach location would be that this city hosts several major events every single year. I'm sure you've heard of Race Week, Daytona 500, Bike Week, Daytona hosts those events. So a few times a year, there's a major event going on that brings people from all over the country and all over the world to this area. So you can imagine during race week, traffic gets horrendous. So that's when a lot of the locals, we evacuate and get the heck out of town. And that's when we take our vacation. So I'd say the biggest con of the Daytona Beach location would be the traffic and the congestion that comes as a result of hosting those events in this area. Pro number two of living in the Daytona Beach area. I would say the second pro of living here has to be the weather. I mean, here's why. Nine months out of the year, we have beach weather. Y'all heard that right. Nine months out of the year, you can go to the beach. The other three months of the year, when it's not necessarily beach weather, you're gonna be in either our fall or our winter seasons, okay? And our winter seasons are very, very mild. It'll get down every now and then, a couple of nights out of the year, it'll get down into the teens. Mainly it's in the 20s or 30s at night. Uh, and then during the daytime, it'll get up until anywhere from the 30s to the 60s during the day. So our winter season is very short. It's really about a month long and then Outside of that, we've just got beautiful weather. Our fall season is really, really nice. Now, we do have a few cons going along with our weather here in the Daytona Beach area. Me personally, I think one of those cons is how hot and humid it gets during the summertime. So during the summer, it'll get up to around 100 degrees, sometimes down to 90 degrees and everywhere in between, but it's very, very hot to me personally. Some people like that kind of weather. I don't, okay? Uh, it does get very humid. So every afternoon, uh, sometime between two and four o'clock in the summertime in this area, it'll rain for five or 10 minutes. That rain increases the humidity, but it does bring the temperature down a few degrees during the day. So it might cool it off a little bit, but it makes it feel like a sauna when you're outside in the summertime. The other con of our weather would have to be the hurricane. I don't really mind the hurricanes anymore because typically what happens once you've lived here long enough and you know what to expect with a hurricane that's coming in is if it's not gonna be a major or a catastrophic hurricane, a lot of people here in this area, they get together with their family or their friends and they hunker down and ride out the storm together. So it's kind of cool to have what we call hurricane parties where you all get together, you have a few drinks, you play some games, you've got food. So it's kind of a fun way to ride out a storm. Now, if they do get bad, we're talking categories uh, three, four, and fives, most of the locals are definitely gonna board up and evacuate. So that can be a hassle from time to time. But again, it's not that bad because we have weeks of notice before a hurricane hits this area. So we can prepare what we're gonna do either way. Pro number three about living in the Daytona Beach area would have to be the food and the drink. So we have a ton of restaurants in the area, both mom and pop's places, or the bigger chain. So whichever one of those that you prefer, we've got you covered. Uh, it's never a hard thing to find a good restaurant for a fantastic meal. We've also got a couple of breweries in the area. So if you like going out for a good beer, we've got you covered. The con to having a bunch of good restaurants and good breweries in the area is that that's where people wanna live. Everybody wants to live within walking distance or a really quick drive to any of those nice restaurants or breweries. So because of that, that's where most people are focusing their efforts on finding a home. And with most people looking in one area, you already know what that does to property values. It just raises the property value. So if you wanna live close to those uh, more concentrated areas of restaurants and breweries, it's just gonna cost you a little bit more to do so. Pro number four of living in the Daytona Beach area would have to be the entertainment. There's so many places in the country where you have to drive a little ways to find good shopping or good nightlife or something fun to do. It's not the case with Daytona. We have something for every age range in the family. 
Now, obviously, one of our more renowned forms of entertainment would be the Daytona International Speedway. So whether you're into NASCAR or not, it's still really cool to get over there and check out the Speedway. It's absolutely enormous. So it's really, really cool to see it in person. And the Speedway does offer tours just about every single day. Outside of the races like the Daytona 500 or the Rolex 24 hour race, they've also got what's called the Richard Petty Experience, where you can actually have a professional driver drive you around the track in a NASCAR stock car, or you can drive the car yourself. So it's pretty cool whether you're into NASCAR or not to get in one of those cars and go almost 200 miles an hour around the track. Now, right across from the Speedway is a brand new development called One Daytona. One Daytona is becoming super popular in this area because it's just basically a big neighborhood of entertainment. There's all kinds of shops in there, like there's a Bass Pro Shop, a movie theater in there. There's all kinds of restaurants. Matter of fact, my favorite barbecue restaurant in the area, Four Rivers, is actually in One Daytona. So I always make it a point to stop there when I go there. Uh, they've also got a little courtyard area where every now and then they'll have live music, ice cream parlors, and there's something called Game Time Arcade. It's got the bar, it's got the restaurant, so you can grab drinks and go out and play just about any arcade game that you can think of. And they've also got a bowling alley there. And if you can't find what you're looking for at One Daytona, head about five minutes up the road to Tanger Outlets. Now Tanger was just built in November of 2016, so it's still relatively new. They've got all kinds of shops, restaurants there. Um, they've got carnivals that'll come in uh, a few times throughout the year. So there's typically something going on in the Tanger Outlet area. If you're into live music, head on down Beachside to the band show. The band shell is actually a big stage that's built literally right next to the beach and all throughout the year they'll have live bands come in, different musicians, uh, speakers, they'll have comedians come in. There's always something going on at the band shell and before or after your concert, literally right next to the band shell on the other side is what's called Ocean Walk Shops. In Ocean Walk, they've got several bars that face the beach and face the band shell. Uh, they've got a few restaurants so you can grab, you know, dinner and a drink before or after your show and they've also got several shops in there as well. Right across the street from the Ocean Walk Bandshell area is Daytona's premier water park called Daytona Lagoon. Now Daytona Lagoon is more than just a water park because they have miniature golf, they have a massive arcade, go-karts, so if you're looking for something fun to do with the family, head on down to the Bandshell Ocean Walk Daytona Lagoon area and you're definitely going to find something fun. Now, if you're more into being in nature, Daytona has all kinds of stuff for you to enjoy. Daytona is actually inside of what's called Volusia County. And Volusia has over 10,000 acres of nature parks and trails for people to enjoy. We've also got uh, rivers, we're right next to the ocean, as you know, uh, lakes, ponds. So there's all kinds of opportunities for fantastic fishing. Matter of fact, there's over 1 million people a year that take advantage of all the nature parks and trails that Volusia has to offer. Now, I would say one of the cons of the entertainment in this area would be the tourism. And what I mean by that is how busy it can get during tourist season. So if you're wanting to go to one of those nature parks on the weekends when it's beautiful weather outside, it's probably gonna be kind of busy. It's the same with going to any of those major shopping areas or the water park. When it's race week or bike week or it's summer vacation and all the kids are out of school, those big entertainment areas can get pretty busy. All right, guys, we made it. My fifth and final pro of living in the Daytona Beach area would have to be the culture. So Daytona is kind of coined the world's most famous beach. So because of that, we have people from all over the country and all over the world that vacation to this area. And at some point, a lot of those vacationers end up moving to Daytona and calling Daytona Beach home. So. It's kind of a, a melting pot here in this area because we have people from all over the world and all over the country that end up moving here. So if you like meeting new people, you like uh, learning about new cultures, it's a fantastic area to live in.
to do so. Now, I would say the fifth and final con of living in Daytona Beach would be the reputation that Daytona has. Now, what I mean by that is typically when you're talking to somebody that's never been to this area before, when they hear of Daytona Beach, Florida, they think either racing or spring break. Because back in the 90s, when MTV used to come here and showcase Daytona, it just seemed like a big party town for college kids, and that's just not the case anymore. Um, we're also much, much more than just a NASCAR or a racing town. So that would be one of my cons, is that people immediately have this premeditated stigma about Daytona and what they think it is, and it's just an amazing place to call home. So that's it, guys. We made it through my five pros and cons of living in the Daytona. Daytona Beach area. I really hope this content was helpful to you as you try and figure out what area of Florida you'd like to live in and specifically the Daytona Beach area. Now, if there's ever anything in the world that I can do for you as you search for a new home, I'm gonna make sure I post my contact information in the description of this video. So feel free to reach out to me via phone call or text or email. I'm gonna make sure that my contact information is right below this video. And if you liked this video or you found the content helpful, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up down below, leave a comment. I'd love to hear um, some of your pros and cons of the Daytona Beach area. And then to stay on, on top of things whenever I release new content specifically about this area, do me a favor and hit that red subscribe button. That way you get notified whenever I put out new content. Thanks again so much for your time. I really appreciate you. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and God bless. Take care guys.